following me. It feels like something's been on your mind this entire time. Traveler, Paimon. I finally found you. Finally? Did something happen? Don't you feel like there's something off about this year's academia extravaganza? When Candace and I were at the cafe earlier, we might have caught sight of some mercs on business. Thing is, they were disguised as tourists here to shop. But no disguise can mask the stench of blood. Just from their suspicious looks, I bet they do dirty work like kidnapping or assassinations. We eavesdropped on them for a while. Their target seems to be someone called Sachin. Sachin? Isn't that the person who Karina mentioned during the opening ceremony? He's apparently the sponsor behind the competition prizes and the diadem of knowledge, but he hasn't shown himself at all. <sighs> Sounds like a rich person, all right. It makes sense now. The Aramites have been struggling to make ends meet recently, so a lot of groups have been doing private work that involves the rich. In their words, one gig sets you up for half a year. Just one job like this nets them enough mora to take it easy for a while. The extravaganza has brought many tourists to Sumeru City all at once. So it's likely that they took advantage of the bustle to sneak in. Dia and I wanted to directly capture them, but they were on guard and made some excuse to slip away. I would have tied them up if it wouldn't have caused a scene. Who's legally supposed to take care of this kind of thing? The Matra or the Core of Thirty? If Sino were here, he'd definitely get involved. <gasps> Why don't we head over to the Academia and tell Amatra? Thanks a million, you two. Not at all. It was coincidence on our part as well. Yeah, don't sweat it. The Aramite's reputation is gonna get even worse if these scumbags succeed. Hmm, but this is Sumeru City. Candace and I don't have as much freedom to act here. So we're leaving this in your hands. Should you require our aid, come find us at the cafe. Notice that something's bucking you. Is it the extravaganza? Cause Paimon's starting to think that there's more than meets the eye here too. Ugh. But thinking like this isn't doing anything. Hmm. Let's just go find Amatra. Ah! <laughs> Squall and Fury! Hey! Isn't that the mantra we investigated Siraj with? Arav, wasn't it? Let's go talk to him! Hello, both. It's been a while. Do you have any issues to report? Someone's planning to kidnap Sachin. Goodness. Though I suppose it's not all that surprising. The growing popularity of the extravaganza has given him quite the reputation boost as its sponsor. He's seen as one of these super rich types. Well, since he's got a target on his back now, shouldn't you send some people to protect him? To tell you the truth, we've thought about doing just that. However, Sachin apparently prefers to spend most of his time out doing field work, and hardly ever comes back to Sumeru City. No one has been able to contact him. Our only lead is something he once said. <clears throat> Each time the Interdarshan Championship is held, I will be watching from close by to choose a suitable person to inherit my estate. Assuming he remains committed to that promise, then he must be right here in the city somewhere. I suspect that the Aramites in question must have heard about that as well, and decided to come here and try their luck. So they shouldn't know where Sachin is either, right? I would assume not. Anyway, Mahamatra Saino is still on vacation, so I'll handle this. Don't you worry. A couple of kidnappers aren't gonna get very far in Sumeru City these days. I have my ways of forcing them out into the open. All of that said, if you're interested in Sachin's story, why don't you try tracking him down as well? The sooner we ascertain his whereabouts, the quicker we can act to ensure his safety. I mean, you could task all the Matra and the whole Corps of Thirty with someone's protection, but if the client doesn't show themselves, there's nothing we can do to help them. Fair point. 
Guess we should start searching for him, too, but... None, I'm afraid. He's never committed any crimes or broken academic protocol, so we don't have a very detailed file on him. I've heard that Alhatham has now stepped down from his post as acting Grand Sage and is back to being the scribe again. Maybe it's worth checking to see if he knows anything. Good idea! Okay, we'll head back to the extravaganza venue and see if we can... He's always the first to leave after the competition ends, and he never tells anyone where he'll be going. Huh. Yeah, actually, that sounds about right for him. Hmm. Let me think. Um... To be honest, he doesn't seem very interested in the extravaganza, so he probably doesn't stick around longer than he has to. To him, being a commentator is just extra work he was roped into. Do you guys know of any places he'd go after work? Oh, maybe. Paimo remembers that his house isn't that far from here, so we might as well check it out. You two? Oh, Kabe, you're home! Come on in, I'll get the door for you. We didn't hear a peep when we first knocked. We thought no one was home. Well, I can't be too careful. If someone from the Academia came here looking for Alhatham, and I opened the door for them without thinking, before long the whole city would know that I'm living here. You're pretty conscientious about this, huh? So, what happens if someone comes inside looking for him while you're at home? It's fine, as long as I stay in my own room. Anyway, why would someone just barge in here looking for him? Most people have better things to do. Ah, fair enough. So do you know where he is at the moment? What do you think? Who knows what he does in his free time? All that matters to me is that he's out of the house. I wouldn't call it that. He's just incapable of saying anything pleasant at all. I told him how the second round went. I won the lot draw, remember? Because of good karma, of course. My luck's on the rise. But him, being him... Oh, you wouldn't believe what he said after I was done talking! You're always quick to remind me that you're my upperclassman, and yet you do not problem-solve in the manner becoming of an upperclassman. This begs the question of why we attach prestige to seniority at all. What does he mean, manner becoming of an upperclassman? What, am I supposed to earn the title of upperclassman now? And he didn't stop there. He- I'd encourage you to reflect on why you've ended up having to rely on luck every round. Frankly, it's incomprehensible to me how you've managed to make it to this age without acknowledging the proverbial elephant in the room of your life. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like something Alhatham would say. I've had it with him. Every time I talk to him, it's the same way. He finds a way to infuriate me every single time. <sighs> Anyway, the disdain is very much mutual between us, so I'll be moving out as soon as possible. I'm actually packing my things right now. He'll have to get used to doing his own cleaning and tidying from now on. See those perfectly hung paintings on the walls? They're coming with me too. <laughs> if his life wasn't utterly devoid of artistic sensibility already, it certainly will be after today. Wait, you're moving out already? But the competition isn't even over yet! How well, obviously I can't just yet. 
I'm just pecking early to get ahead of the game. I've got my new place picked out already. The moment I have my hands on the prize money, I'm going to buy it and move my things right in. It'll take me three days tops to move out of here for good. I now know what I have to do to achieve this goal. No matter what happens in the third round, I will win. I will emerge triumphant. You'll well, we'll be rooting for you. But are you sure you'll be all right? Hmm? In what w Layla said that she thinks you'll get caught up in internal conflict. Meaning what exactly? Oh, don't tell me you think I have serious personality flaws too. Oh, we didn't say that. <laughs> but think about it. You say you want to win, but you also turned Faro's on down when she offered to give you her points. Plus, you took it upon yourself to help those desert foxes. Wait, what's so unusual about all that? I gave you my reasons. I would have felt guilty otherwise. Where's the conflict in that? <sighs> well, when you put it like that... Yes, why indeed? It's a good question. I guess it's just in my nature. Plus, if I just did nothing, then there'd be no escaping the blame if something bad came of it later down the line. But thinking like that all the time must make your life so exhausting. Not to mention that by helping out, you put yourself at risk. Fainting in the middle of the desert, for example. Was that really worth it? It's complicated. I... Look, let's maybe leave this conversation for another time. What was it you needed Al Haytham's help with, anyway? Sachin. Huh. He did actually mention a Sachin recently. I remember he brought a few documents home that day. He was thinking out loud as he looked through them, making some notes and doodling as he went. He even suggested that I should take a look, but I didn't. Uh, give me a moment. Let me go find them. Ah, this is the one. Here, take it. Uh, you sure he'd be okay with this? Huh, with taking liberties? He's certainly okay with helping himself to my beer whenever he pleases. And anyway, he did ask me if I wanted to read his notes. I didn't see the point at the time, so he just left them on the side. He doesn't leave documents lying around unless he's okay with other people reading them. It's fine. I cool, if you say so. Okay, let's see what he's got on the cheek. information. My one's getting a headache. So, uh, to sum up, Sachin put the Academia in charge of managing his estate and went off to do research, right? He even said that if he really liked one of the contestants, he wouldn't just give them a reward, but his entire estate as well. Oh, that must be worth heaps and heaps of Mora. What? Are you serious? All of Sachin's wealth, that's... More than I could spend in a lifetime, surely. Heck, if I got chosen, I'd be able to pay off all my debts, then buy a new place, and still have cash to burn. I could build another palace of Alcazar's array. Except this time, I'd make it ten times bigger. Oh, then there's that new project in Port Ormos, of course. The bridge renovation. To do it properly would take upwards of... Hey, hey, snap out of it! You're getting way ahead of yourself there, mister! Uh, you're right. First, I need to focus on winning and moving out of this place. Huh? Wait a moment. There's a loose slip of paper tucked in between the... Did Al Haytham write this? It looks like he was jotting ideas down as he was thinking things over. Hmm. Let's see. Um, two phrases have been circled. Sachin, dead or alive, unknown. And 
diadem of knowledge. Some of this stuff is just plain incomprehensible. Is this written in some other language? Let me see. Huh. I recognize this script. Hmm. Give me a second. <clears throat> Lofty ideals may provide no defense at all against nihilism, but perhaps little decisions can. That's a rough translation, anyway. I can't guarantee it's 100%. Hmm? There's another, smaller line of text underneath. Uh, huh. Wow! It's so cool that you can actually read this script! We worked together on a project once when we were students. The title was Decoding the Runes and Architectural Philosophy of the Ruins of King Deshret's Civilization. I had to familiarize myself a little with this script at the time. Oh, interesting! So, any idea what Alhatham meant by all this? <laughs> Who knows? The way his mind works is one of the great mysteries of the world. Fair enough! Well, guess we've learned all we can here. Yeah, he better catch those crooks. But until then, uh, let's just head out for a stroll. <laughs> <laughs>